Hey everybody, this is Perch. I want to thank everybody for the the very kind support of uh, Jim and I Jump, this uh, this new crowdfunded comic uh, that I'm helping to produce. It's really appreciated. Uh, what I love about it is uh, it's cheap, uh, meaning you can get in and full shipping and comic and everything, 10 bucks. Uh, it's, a, it's a great price. You can see a link in the description below. Um, this is a shill. Yes, uh, I, I don't do it every video, obviously, and, and try not to because uh, you know, I don't want to bug you with it. Uh, but I, but I want to say thank you, a deep thank you to the people who supported it. I think helping to get some more things out there, do some cheaper books. Uh, it's appreciated. Larry King worked his his ass off for this book, and and is definitely uh, it's labor of love on his part. So so a big thank you to all of you who helped support it. Um, I'm looking at this article that's uh, on SciFi.com behind the panel. This is by Mike Avella, who's on Twitter. I did a quick scroll through the Twitter uh, feed just. Curious. I, I had a, I had a suspicion, and uh, suspicion confirmed. But, um, but you know, it, it, it's it's not a it's not a big deal. Um, everybody's of course got their own opinions and their own things going on. But I do wish that when you see kind of uh, you know one headline or a couple words of an article or a single tweet, when you click on the feed and you just see everything the person's done, it's predictable in all directions. It's like you you can name it in one. It's like okay, this person's going to be. Uh, you know, making angry uh, rage statements about, uh, you know, the COVID, or here's another person who's going to be uh, making angry statements about toxic fans, or here's a person who's going to be making angry statement about the libs. It's just, it's always, it's always so, so predictable. I wish, I wish it would not be. I just, I, these all feel like bots. Um, but anyway, uh, the article is, it's time for Marvel and DC to embrace change, retire their legacy characters. And if there was ever a headline that most uh, deserved or exemplified, that picture of Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, kind of rolling his eyes in an exaggerated way, going, oh, here we go again. It's this one. Um, look, this is, a, is an article that becomes a you know, slogan salad of all the things you've heard over the last five or six years about uh, why things need to change. It manages to cram in uh, a bunch of different points and mush them together, uh, conflate them, if you will, to, uh, you know, just, just a confusing conclusion. It's basically built on the premise of, hey, did you see all that media hype that John Kent coming out as bisexual got? Wasn't all that media hype great? Everyone covered it. The NPR covered it. Washington Post covered it. New York Times covered it. Did you see Tom Taylor on CNN? He was on CNN. Because he was on, all those things happened, this is the future of the industry. This is the only way forward. De getting covered by major news publications is, is success. There's no other way to deny it. If uh, you simply got this kind of uh, you know media attention for every comic book, the comic book industry would be doing great. By the way... Elsewhere, uh, from the same author, it uh, kind of boasts about uh, Comicron's numbers saying the industry is doing great. So if the industry is doing great, then why are we talking about how we need to desperately change and retire our legacy characters? Uh, because it's doing great, according to the numbers. They're like, what's the, what's, the, pick a lane. Uh, anyway, um, it's amazing it, it's an amazing disconnect to talk about, you know, he says, back when I worked in morning television news, we'd always look for stories like this, the talker of the day. You could build a big chunk of your morning show around something that served as a magnum conversation. That's true. What's also true is those conversations do not lead to stories. They do not, you know, and he says, uh, it's, incre it's increasingly rare to have a story break out from a Twitter trending topic into a water cooler story where everyone has an opinion. Yeah, that is factually absolutely wrong. Have you watched daytime TV lately? Have you watched the news? They're taking so many cues from Twitter right now, it's disgusting. But anyway, the, the premise of this article is that it's time to retire. Uh, Marvel and DC may never have the guts to do it, but one should seriously consider retire the oldest legacy characters of Marvel and DC. Stick in new ones. I'm also thinking that John Kent could be the beginning of something even bigger and bolder. My friend... Have you been paying attention to comics for the last five years? This is not new. The all new, all different Marvel. I mean, hell, Marvel even had a big legacy event where they basically touted the fact that they had new people in all these costumes. It bombed horribly, horribly. I, I was um, I was part of, an, or not part of, I was watching this argument take place around somebody who says, well, the most popular comic right now is Miss Marvel. And that's factually not true uh, by sales, uh, by 
the fact that there isn't even a Miss Marvel on the stands right now because Marvel currently isn't publishing one. And this person was desperate to be right. So they kept changing, no matter what you, no matter what was happened. People were like, well, they're not even publishing a Marvel, a Miss Marvel comic right now. Well, that's because the character is so popular that Disney wants to give it a little breather before, you know, coming back out with a new series. Um, that's okay. So hang on a second. We're saying Disney, Disney is a company that uh, when they get something really popular, they're the model of restraint of uh, not milking that to death. Disney. That's, that's what we're saying here. Anyway, the, the argument just continued and continued with this person was so desperate to be right that they kept changing every aspect of it. To, and it's just, why? What's the point? Miss Marvel is not Marvel's most popular character, nor does it need to be for you to enjoy it. This is a part that blows me away, and it's inherent in this article as well. If you enjoy something, buy it. You don't need it to be number one to enjoy it. It doesn't matter. Your only interest in if a comic is popular enough or not that you enjoy is, is it, is it at least popular enough that it's not going to get canceled for low sales? That should be your only thing that you worry about. Otherwise, who cares? And I say this to all of you, including, I mean, on, on both sides of this argument, if there's something you enjoy, just enjoy it. You, it doesn't need to be number one. The fact that it's not number one doesn't mean you need to go on the rampage to try and fake claim it's number one. That's that's lunatic behavior. Stop doing it. Just enjoy the comic. This writer uh, continues um, talking about uh, you know that uh, you know Sean Akazi posted a great thread on Twitter. Not really. Um, no offense. I mean, he great artist. I, I like Sean's art. I think it's uh, it's fine, but. It's, um, again, all this is predicated on a very fictional statement, which is to say, if we change all the characters, if we make them look more diverse, more look more like the readers, something I don't agree with at all, I, by the, doesn't mean you shouldn't have diverse characters, you should, but if your reason for doing so is to quote unquote, make it look like the readers, why? That, that's not showing a connection to sales. It's not showing a connection to even what people are terribly interested in. That's, that's, again, a false premise. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do diversity. You Absolutely, you should do diversity. You should have a wide mix of characters in, in a universe that houses thousands of characters. You can absolutely do that. Here's another crazy idea. You can use some of the diverse characters you already have because you've got tons that you created and then promptly forgot about. It'd be wonderful if you didn't just throw these characters in the trash, but you actually tried to, you know, make some use out of them. That would be, that would be pretty nifty. But regardless, um, it, it goes on and on about, uh, you know, retire Peter Parker, uh, keep Batman, dump Bruce Wayne, get rid of Clark Kent, keep Superman. I, you know, ideally the John Kent. We, we go on for Don, Diana Prince, Hal Jordan, the Richards family, Bruce Banner, Steve Rogers, Logan. Who's to say they must always be the people in the costumes and masks of our favorite heroes? Batman may have been born from tragedy, but why should it only be a rich guy whose parents were grown down in Crime Alley? And it's these little notes throughout this article that really start to sum up what this author is really getting at. It's, it's not about, uh, it, it, it's too drenched in Twitter nonsense. We're getting, once again, Batman, a rich guy. So Batman being rich, and this may be a crazy hot take, has never been the core part of that character. It, he is rich, obviously lives in the mansion doing all those things. But you look at the great Batman stories, in particular, the ones that are are most loved. And him being wealthy is either a you know distant sub factor or not a factor at all. That's not why people people don't show up to Batman because he's rich. They show up to Batman because he does cool things. He's got his gadget. The money is just a it's, it's just, it's basically answering a question. If readers ever go, how would he have access to all these gadgets and things? It's like, well, he's rich. That's the only reason he's rich. It's means to an end. Um, the, the article continues. It talks about the ultimate universe as a nice, great way to jump into Marvel. It was. The other crazy thing that the ultimate universe had, all the same legacy characters. They changed a few of them. But by and large, are the same legacy characters. I don't think using the ultimate universe is a great... Uh, you know, a great supporting argument to this fact. Um, it's uh, then he goes on into this. He goes, uh, the Jonathan Hickman curated X books were gorgeous and have some fascinating concepts, but for new readers, heck, even veteran comic fans, it's almost impenetrable. 
well, that's an interesting statement. I was under the impression that the uh, Jonathan Hickman Eck books were, you know, the best representation we had in comics and were absolutely super popular and everybody loved them. Curious. He goes on to say the Nick Spencer Amazing Spider-Man was interesting for longtime fans, but the entire run was steeped in Spidey lore. If you had no idea about Peter's long troubled ties to the Osborne family, then how in the world could you truly appreciate the climax to the run? I mean, people figured it out. Really? I Again, I'm trying to understand that if you really parse this article and you look paragraph by paragraph, you have to assume that either the writer believes all the comic fans are complete idiots, that they can't understand basic concepts, don't like to read, or... This is all necessary because we got to get rid of rich people or white people, which also shows up more than once. I mean, there's one line in here that that I that I also had to laugh because this is a line that both sides of this debate say. They say the exact same thing, different meanings behind it, but it's kind of funny to see it show up here. And it says, um, let's face it, replacing the lineup of typical white male characters who have held these roles for decades could prove interesting for readers looking to see a bit of themselves in the heroes they read about. It's also worth noting that introducing a gay Batman, and at some point, it is going to happen, will be much easier to do with someone other than Bruce Wayne beneath that cowl. I, I'm trying to wrap my head around that whole statement. <laughs> Again, it's funny because the people who are really anti-establishment, anti-DC and Marvel are also saying that, like, you know we're going to get a gay Batman. And now here's the other side of the argument going, you know we're going to get a gay Batman. <laughs> it's, 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 I don't know why that's so funny to me, but it's, it's, it's funny when both sides are saying the same thing. I like that it'll be much easier to do as someone other than Bruce Wayne beneath the cowl. I mean, it is going to be much easier because you don't have a Jean Grey hanging out over in the DC universe that can just kind of magically wish it to happen. But uh, anyway, um, look, the the article what's what's also I guess I, I'm bouncing around here is funny is that when you go to the uh, more from this author, the author uh, talks about Marvel cutting ties with Immortal Hulk artist Joe Bennett over controversial art. Curious uh, his thoughts on you know all publicity is good publicity on that one, but then it's the next one priced out. At what point do comics become too expensive for fans? And the writer basically ta says it, it's too expensive now, and and talks about Todd McFarlane kind of holding the line at two ninety nine, kind of other things. So, okay, if I'm thinking this writer is consistent, the the crazy part to this whole thing is okay. And we're, we need to, it's, it's basically saying, hey, you know, these, these fans are uh, getting older and, you know, we need to get new people into comics and they're not going to do it if it's the legacy characters. And we, that's why we have to change everything. And, and then they, again, lots of just Twitter tweets that get sprinkled throughout here, just mixed in new stories and new characters don't take away from the stories we've had before. No, of course they don't. Uh, of course, nobody's saying that. Of course, they don't take away from the stories we've had before. But it takes away value from today if you can't make it land. That's the, the again, there's a, there's a very strong lack of just history here. Let's say for the moment, you really want to retire these legacy characters. You, have a, you want to have a more diverse lineup. Cool. Comics have done that in the past. In fact, this author acknowledges it of... Uh, you know, when uh, Tony Stark stepped out of the Iron Man armor or, uh, you know, we've, we've seen Wally West take over as Flash. It's happened. What what was key to both those events? Can you guess? There was a good story behind it. You can replace all kinds of the legacy characters if you have a good story behind it. And it can't be the second priority. Unfortunately, with so much of this, it's it's we need to replace the characters. We need to do that now. Let's get it. We got to, our, our old customers are dying. They're getting so old they can't read comics anymore. We got to get these new customers in here. And the only way we're going to get new customers in here is if the characters look like them. So let's uh, let's start just making the characters look and, and be like them. Oh yeah, we should, we should probably have a story. That's how it comes across. And again, the, the crazy part of this article, and every time this comes up on Twitter or anywhere else, is that it ignores one very solid fact. They tried this in 2016. It didn't work. It, it hard failed. It failed to the point that, yes, the comic publishers had to come in and, and bring a lot of the legacy characters back. And I've heard the argument of, well, the problem is Marvel just didn't stick with it long enough. Th things were bleeding fast. People were screaming about it. It, it's, it's sticking with it longer would have been suicide and it was directly in opposition to what both companies were doing with the movies with the thing that frankly makes a lot more money if you want to replace legacy characters 
you're going to have to have a really good story and a good reason to do it. You can't cheat. You can't, uh, you know, wave a magic wand and say, you know, to, you know, no more white guys. And then suddenly you've got this diverse group. And why is it, by the way, that whenever we have these articles talking about replacing legacy characters and the fact that, you know, there's, you know, the, the, the basically there's no danger to Peter Parker because everybody knows he's going to survive. I don't know. Why did that work for the first 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years? Why is it that customers in the 80s, when this comic industry was uh, much larger in terms of the money it was bringing in, what, 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 what was going on with those readers? Did they somehow not think that Peter Parker was going to survive because it was, you know, he was only 30 years old at that point instead of 60? That, d d all those people are like, well, at 30, he could still die in this adventure. No, of course not. Everybody knew Peter Parker was going to survive in the 80s, and yet people bought anyway. Why? Because they were prioritizing story. It had nothing to do with the fact that Peter is too big to die, or we have to replace a legacy character. And are you saying that if we put in legacy characters, we're going to kill them off in a year because, you know, we want to keep it unpredictable? What, what is even going on with this argument? It makes no sense. This entire article makes no sense. It's, it's again, it's a bunch of tweets that are meant to have people kind of pat you on the back and feel good about it, but it doesn't actually follow any kind of logic, any kind of coherent sense, and certainly no history. To make my point extremely clear, I do think we need a vast, diverse lineup. I do think we need new characters. I think first and foremost, we need stories that are compelling, that matter. And stop putting weird handcuffs on yourself to say, well, there's absolutely no way we can write a story with stakes if it's Bruce Wayne, because everybody knows Bruce Wayne's you know, going to survive. Huh, that's weird, because Hush sold pretty well. So Scott Snyder, uh, Greg Capullo, Batman also sold pretty well back, uh, you know, a little more than 10 years ago. Why was that? Did everybody think that uh, Batman was going to die and, and there, was, there was risk that they were going to kill him off? Is that, is that what happened? No. It had a story that hooked people. It had art that hooked people. And it worked. And again, this, this writer talks about price being an issue. Yeah, no shit. Price is an issue. One of the reasons why the audience is shrinking and bleeding down is people aren't willing to pay $4.99 for a book. That has nothing to do with legacy characters, but I'll tell you this, it's far more likely that somebody's going to put down $5 for a book featuring a character they know that they can tra they can relate to the movies or that they've heard before than some brand new character that is untested and unproven. That audience is not going to come to comics, pay $5 to see an experiment with a brand new character that's supposed to better reflect who they are. Uh, you people go to football games, they put a lot of money down to get a ticket to go to a pro NFL game. They don't just randomly go to some high school where they can get in for free and say, well, football is football. Screw it. That's this, this, this argument is so tiring. Again, it, it, the perfect example is that rock rolling his eyes image. It's exhausting because it's uh, it, it, I mean, remember the clone saga in Spider-Man? Yes, the story was messy, but it did give us Ben Riley. Well, Ben is back, and he's taking over from Peter Parker in this flagship Amazing Spider-Man title. It's just one issue in, and I'm into the story. Hopefully, it's a permanent change. What? What are you talking about? I, I, it scares me when you see these, uh, you know, these articles written by people who know enough history to be dangerous, but not enough to make good decisions. What terrifies me here is that people, editors inside comics, go, oh, this was published on sci-fi. I know that logo. That's a logo that's on my TV. I'll bet this is credible. And then they start thinking the same way, and they avoid the, the necessary task. Listening to your audience, listening to your readers, looking at your sales numbers, figuring out what sells. Thanks for listening.